Welcome back everybody, today we're reading some more Entitled People. As it is every single time, it's gonna be a beautiful episode. I'm so excited to read some more concerning content, and I hope you guys are too. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. Enjoy guys. I'm the neighborhood Karen, but not really. There's a hill on my street. I live close to the high school. Sometimes when you drive around the parked cars, it sends you face to face with another car on the downhill. There's an extra no parking sign to remind people to not be there. House went up for sale. The realtors would park directly under the no parking sign. I one day walked over to the main realtor and I warned her to not park there or she'll get hit. She moved her car and believe me when she saw traffic after school let out. Another time a realtor parked there, I warned him and he responded with, I've already been told about you. It's fine. In the most dismissive way, a teenager came over the hill in dad's old pickup truck and crushed the front of the guy's red sports car. The kid was not hurt and certain that he was not blamed for the accident. Oh my god, that's like instant karma. No way. When I first started reading this, I thought you were going to say that you're the entitled person. But no, it's these bloody real estate agents. And you 100% did the right thing. You were only trying to help. They're just being so rude. Like, oh yeah, no, nah, it's totally fine. I don't need to move my car. Pretty much immediately some Somebody runs into their car. Yeah, maybe that wouldn't have happened if you moved your car. Unbelievable. Story number two is called 12 entitled people in an Airbnb designed for six. Cost me $600. I thought you might enjoy my second thirsty biatch story. I posted previously here about a client of mine with a similar story, but this is the origin story that happened years before that other post. My wife and I own a mountain cabin and a few years ago, we decided to put it up on Airbnb. The place is a remote A-frame on three acres of forested land with awesome views and it's about 30 minutes from a ski resort. This was our first Airbnb, so we are pretty cautious with everything, i.e. looking at guest past reviews, asking them about their trip to make sure that this place would suit them, etc. Everything was going pretty well. Until the entitled people booked the whole weekend for Thanksgiving, they told us they were driving out from Texas. Mum, dad, three little kids and two dogs. Being that this was our first holiday rental, we went all out for them. We set a turkey to defrost in the fridge for them and we left out a snack platter and a couple of bottles of champagne. They arrive on Sunday night and the next few days all hell breaks loose. I get a 6am call Monday morning. The whole family is puking and sick as hell. They all had altitude sickness. The cabin is at 11,000 feet above sea level so this does happen. Especially when you aren't in shape and you just came from sea level. I did warn the guests about this ahead of time. So I'm on the phone talking them through everything. Where the urgent care is, what to do, etc. By day 2 things have calmed down. Tuesday. However then I take a look at our water cistern gauge. Remote monitored. The house has what we'll call a slow well recovery system. Basically, at some times of the year, the well might only produce around 60 gallons per day instead of the usual 300 plus. So we have a 500 gallon water storage system, which helps smooth out the demand curves. Basically, once the tank goes below 40%, the well starts pumping. And if the well goes dry, a timer gets started and it'll pump again in three hours until the tank is topped up. There's a full description in the listing and guidebook. This system is more than adequate for six guests. Also, the house only has one bathroom and a 40 gallon and hot water tank so it's not like anyone can take long showers and that's all in the listing it's a rustic place tactically speaking we just ask the guest to conserve water but the system is automatic and no one knows it's there well after 48 hours i checked our tank monitor and i see that it's around 35 percent full which means the guests have used all of the storage plus what the well can produce in two days i'm estimating nearly 700 gallons of water i literally thought something must have broken because there was no way in hell two parents and three little kids used that much water like like maybe the well fuse popped and they got nothing from the well. So I'm now freaking out thinking that this nice family is going to be out of water on Thanksgiving. I called her and I politely asked that they can surf water and had them reset the system, aka turn the breaker on and off. So I basically said that I'd monitor it for the next three hours and if I didn't see the levels make progress, I'll get a water truck in. This would literally be a first as I've never needed to do it. Her response, sounds good but hurry because we drink a lot of water. How weird of a comment is that? As if five people drinking a gallon a day, Matt somehow equates to the hundreds of gallons missing from the system. Well, there's really no change in the water level after three hours. So I get on the phone to book a water truck. And as it's now one day before Thanksgiving, it's just not going to happen. So I now need to figure out how to transport water to this house. I live one and a half hours away. I went to farm and tractor supply and I bought a 275 gallon tank that would fit in my truck, plus hoses and pumps. Then I drive up there, figure out where I can buy bulk water from and then I go to the house. I finally get there around 4pm and the guests are around 
out, but they gave me permission to go inside and test things out. AKA, I wanted to make sure the system was working. It was so they really did use that. I went inside and I found two huskies in a crate who'd pooped themselves and it was all over the place. The place smelled gross. The owner said they'd be back and they'd clean it up. At this point, I've been working on this for like eight hours. I'm sick. It's 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside and I'm now hooking up the transfer pump. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving and I still need to get to my parents' house. Thankfully, only 30 minutes from here. I start pumping and then I see their car pull up and they're waiting at the bottom of the driveway. Knowing they have small kids, I go down and I say hi and I let them know that they can go in and I'll be done in about 40 minutes. They started to act real odd at this point, but they go ahead in. Then I saw two more cars on the side of the road around the switchback, a big steep S bend in front of the house and it clicks. The reason I just did all of this work and spent nearly $600 on supplies is because these people had 12 people staying there. If you all are curious as to how I didn't notice when I went outside, I didn't snoop around. I just went straight into the breaker box and then went to the crawl space where the tanks are. Also, the smell from the dogs was just horrid, so I got out as fast as possible. At this point, I went up to the front door, knocked and said, be honest with me, how many people do you have staying here? Her? Uh, nine? I could see that she was lying, but even that number was over our legal capacity based on our permit. Me? You realize that the listing is for six? Her? Well, there are beds for more people and the kids have a crib and we didn't know that our family wanted to come when we booked it. The loft does have a pull-out couch, so best case they're sleeping for eight adults, but I'm guessing that people were sleeping on the couches as well. I just spent $600 plus a full day to solve a problem that was actually not a problem. Her? Well, the house should have water. Me? The house system was designed and tested for six, the stated number on the listing. I don't know how you think it's okay to have this many people here. Her? We could leave, but it would have to be tomorrow and we expect a refund because we don't want to drive down these roads in the dark with our kids. It's maybe 6 p.m. at this point. No cell service at the cabin, so I went to town and got in the Wi-Fi at a local bar and called Airbnb. At this point, I'd been hosting for three months and I had no idea how to handle this situation. But now I was more afraid that they'd damaged something in the house. So Airbnb cancelled their reservation and asked them to leave the house. I was able to recover around $200 for a deep cleaning on the house and they didn't get a refund. On a funny note, at the beginning of this year, I started a hot tub service company and water trucking is a service that we do offer. And I use some of that equipment to get started. Oh my God, I can't even imagine dealing with this. Sounds like a bloody nightmare. Like, oh yeah, I know it said six people, but I'm going to bring twice as many. Nah, get out of here. So frustrating. And not to mention all the extra people, but the dogs in there as well. It would have been such a mess after this. Okay, story number three is called Lady Gets a Ticket After People Kindly Warned Her. This is from a few months ago, but it's still gold. There's an intersection by my work that connects two main roads, east, west, north, and south. When you come to this intersection from any direction, you won't be able to turn left. There's signs everywhere telling you no turning left. Easy, right? No, not easy. Living in that town and going to work where I work for almost a decade, I've seen so many people turn left. People usually just honk and swear, but this time there was a cop waiting to go through. East. This lady pulls up in a nice Cadillac. Nice. She's coming from the south and goes to turn. You guessed it, left. Now, people see the cop. They know that her getting pulled over will slow down traffic as it's a two-lane street. So, panic in shoes. Honking, yelling, and some swearing. One guy on the street. Lady, don't turn left. There's a cop. Don't turn left. Like a freaking chant. This lady rolls down her window the rest of the way. At this point, she's mid-intersection going to turn left. The cop is shaking his head too. Bro looked like he was on lunch and he was so pissed. Like he's close enough I can see the sandwich bag in his car. Lady yells out and I'll never forget. I can do whatever the hell I want to. I will do whatever I want to. And if I want to turn left, I'm going to freaking turn left. I don't care. And left she goes. The cop looks down. Lunchtime has been interrupted. His windows may have been closed, but you can tell when someone yells, you know what? He turns around and puts his lights on. Of course she pulled over. She can do whatever she wants until the cops are there. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Want, and that includes getting pulled over. How embarrassing. And the cop's like, oh, come on. Can't I please eat my lunch? I think the funniest part about this is how they got upset. Like, why are you getting frustrated at this person that's telling you not to go left? Like it's some sort of personal attack or something. You literally aren't allowed to turn left. And they're only trying to let you know that you can't do that. But they take it personally. And they're like, I can do whatever I want. Well, yeah, not in this situation. Story number four is called Customer Wanted My Hat Because You're just a poor student. You shouldn't be able to afford this. As the title suggests, a customer believed that because I was a student, I couldn't afford to buy a quality product. Background, I came to the UK as an international student after completing my bachelor's in my home country to pursue a master's here. Like any student, I had trouble finding a decent job
job to work my hours, but eventually I found one at a normally store that opens 24 hours. Fast forward to one year later and I'm almost at the end of my degree and I'm working at the store in a supervisor capacity, which comes with a minimal raise as well. In the past year, I've set aside some savings from each month's salary and so now I decided to spend some on myself. I went and bought a cap from a well-known brand to replace the one that I'd brought with me as it was getting frayed from the corners, etc. The event. This happens as I'm walking to the store in the morning around 9, 9.30. The store's located next to the underground so we see all kinds of characters in terms of dunks, dunks and kids and general shoppers. My entire person happens to be a woman in her late 30s who gives off pure I'm water therefore better vibes. Entitled person. Excuse me, I need you to get me item that she was standing literally right next to. Ma'am, it's on the shelf behind you. I can't see it so get this and don't be rude and take off your cap when talking to me. Mumble something about students. Store rules permit us to wear caps as long as we're not on the till. Me, I'm allowed to wear the cap by the manager and also because it's a bit chilly, but that won't affect any help you need. Entitled person looks at my hat. Where did you get this? Me, I bought it. Entitled person, you're just a poor student. No way you bought this on your salary. A customer must have forgotten it and you must have nicked it. Ma'am, I don't know how to convince you, but I bought this with my own money and I could even show you the receipt. Thank you, digital receipt. Entitled person, receipts can be photoshopped. Give me this hat, it probably looks better on me anyway. And it's much more my class. Yeah, she said class, not style. As this conversation is happening, I'm finishing with my work in the aisle and I try to leave, but she insists on creating a ruckus. The sole point being that I stole that hat and I must be stealing from the store too, at which point my manager steps in and asks her to leave. She does so, but not before trying to sneak the item that she wanted into her bag, resulting in a banning notice. Wait, so they're getting upset at you because they think that you stole your hat while they're trying to steal something? What? <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. And so comical too. Like, is this a skit? How is that a real situation that happened? Some people need to mind their own business so bad. But at the same time, so many people are dead set on being annoying and making everybody's day just a little bit worse. Yeah, I wouldn't ever know what to say in a situation like this. Probably laugh. Story number five is called people trying to reserve a parking space in a public beach parking lot. Vacationing on the big island. Head to one beach. Lot is full. Change your plans, head to Hapuna Beach, pull into the lot, one shaded spot left. Someone is standing in it. Imagine the worst stereotype of an entitled American white tourist. A group of them. Wife is driving. I roll down the window. What's going on? Them. Oh, we're saving this for our brother who's right behind you. Me. You can't save and reserve a public parking space. You can ask, but I can say no. Sorry, but I've got two young kids. I'm going to park here. Them. There's parking right there. Pointed at the non-shaded spot. Me. Great. Your brother can park there. Wife pulls into the space and they move. Curses, waving of hands. Me. Hey, this is like the carry-on luggage overhead space on a plane. First come, first served. Them. Calling me all sorts of bad names in front of my kids. Me. Locks eyes with my eight-year-old. I'm barely able to hold in the laughter. Go to the beach, have a good time. No slashed tires or smashed windows. For clarity, I'm a white American tourist who strives not to be an entitled prick. Also, if somebody set up a barbecue or had some sort of RV and a table there, whatever, wouldn't care. The fact that they tried to reserve a public space for someone not even there yet. They can get out of here. Yeah, like they can't do what they did and it is super frustrating. But at the same time, I feel like you cared way too much about this. Like what, the only reason you didn't park in the other spot was because it was sunny? Like I understand that the people standing in the way shouldn't have done that, but I feel like all of this was kind of unnecessary. This comment says, man, this guy wakes up and does battle every day. Cool your jets, bro. Park in the sun. Put your luggage elsewhere. Be cool and don't fight the world. Yeah, that's the vibe it gave off. Just sort of didn't need to happen. Okay, story number six is called Entitled Customer Wanted Me To Follow Her Home. First time posting here. This happened a few days ago and I still can't believe it. I, 25 male, work at a garden nursery. It's a decent size with a shop in the middle and outdoor plants on benches and racks around it with a car park. Enter a lady in her 60s and her brother. They drove into our nursery. We have a 100 meter or so driveway through the plants. As the owner was walking along it, they beeped at him and she started yelling at him about selling her a dead tree to plant for it to sprout. I don't know either. Anyway, not a good start. They park and they walk around for a bit. The brother asked me all sorts of questions and wanting discounts on plants. No discounts unless they're old. And starts basically interrogating me about my life and what I'm doing for work. Which I just say yes and no to without actually telling the truth. I finally get rid of him and I'm walking through checking that no plants need water. The lady then spots me and starts to yell at me from about 80 meters away. Now some people do this and I go to them even though it annoys me that they're pretty much calling me like a dog. Maybe they're handicapped and it's hard for them to walk. Well, this lady barely speaks English and is rambling something at me. And I keep asking her to re 
repeat herself. Finally, I understand that she wants to buy a tree. It's a big weeping cherry. It's 2 meters tall, 2.5 meters including the pot, which is 90 liters of soil, and really heavy. I take the price and I walk with her to the shop where I ask her if she'd like it delivered. Now, we have a big truck for deliveries and it goes out once a week. We never do free deliveries. They don't cost much, but just to cover fuel and time for the driver. Anyway, she says no, she doesn't want it delivered, and says, my car, my car, pointing at her SUV. I think to myself, there's no way that tree and a massive pot is going to fit in there, but whatever, and I put the sale through. I get a tree trolley and I bring the tree to a car. Her brother's in the driver's seat and she goes and gets into the back seat of the car. So I say, uh, where do you want me to put it? She looks at me in the eyes and says, put it in your car and you come follow me. I was like, what? And she repeated again. I literally just laughed and said, what are you talking about? She kept repeating it louder and louder. I told her, no, I'm not delivering this tree. You said you didn't want it delivered and you didn't pay for delivery. She then says that she didn't know that she had to pay and how much was it? I said, where to? And she eventually said a suburb two 15 minutes away. I told her what it was and she said, okay, follow me home and I'll pay you then. I said, no, that's not how it works and it'll be delivered on Friday when she pays and to come back inside the shop after some more time yelling instructions at me and talking to her brother in another language. I put the tree next to the shop and she came to keep yelling at me to deliver the tree and she'd pay me when I followed her home. I was done. I yelled at her in the same tone that she'd been yelling at me. I can't. My car cannot fit that tree. Only the truck can. I can't drive the truck. It's impossible for me to deliver the tree even if I wanted to, which I don't. After a bit more, she finally realized that it wasn't going to happen. Now she had this weird thing as did her brother where they wouldn't talk or interact with the female staff members. So when I took her inside and the other owner, the owners are a couple, was at the register, she wouldn't talk to her. I told the owner what was happening and that this lady needed to organize delivery and went to walk off. This lady then screams at me, excuse me, because I was going. I spun around and snapped, she will get your delivery details, she'll help you. Well, the lady basically just walked back off to her car and started driving off. We had no delivery payment, number, address, and even a name. I had to run out to their car and stop them. She wouldn't give me her address and when she finally did, when I looked it on Google Maps, it didn't even exist. So she paid for a tree and we had no way to get it to her. The following day, the brother rings up wanting to know about the delivery. It's Thursday, the day before deliveries. I told the work group chat what happened so everyone knew what was happening if these people came back. Anyway, one of our female staff members answered the phone and tells the guy everything I said and how they need to pay. He wouldn't listen to her, kept interrupting her and complaining. It ended with her telling him to F off and hung up. She did this because she thought that we could refund their credit card and never serve them again. However, they paid in cash, so another staff member member had to ring them back up, smooth it all over and have him come in with his van and collect the tree. I really hope they don't come back. Wow, that's so bad. How would you get anything done ever if you were somebody who acted like this? Being so difficult for no reason. This has been such a fun episode so far. I hope you guys are having a good time. Story number seven is called Entitled Parent Says That Free Ride Is Not Good Enough. First post, sorry, a long one. Happened a couple of years ago. New family moved in a couple of doors down with a son same age as my youngest. We live in the boondocks three kilometers from the nearest school bus stop. All parents drive their kids to the stop and they wait in the car until the bus comes. There are no straight lights with bears and cougars. After a while we got to be friendly, even though the mum was loud and spoke aggressively. The rest of the family didn't like her and we discussed our transportation plans. I'm lucky enough to have a brother with a disability who takes my kids to the bus where my husband and I work. My neighbor, EN, entitled neighbor, asked if my brother would consider picking up her son as well on the way by and she would pay him $20 a month. He agreed and was feeling pretty proud of having a job. Two months later, he told me that she then offered more pay, 40 a month. He was very pleased about that. Being in the boonies, we had to drive down their very dark, narrow driveway and then turn around in a very small area in front of their house to go back out. It was difficult. If my brother wasn't feeling well, other family members took driving duty and picked up the other child. No matter what, our whole family was happy to help my brother with his job. Sometimes the child was sick and they didn't let us know. Sometimes he was still asleep and we were waiting. Sometimes the parents were even at home and they didn't take their own child. The parents always left earlier and the child around 8 to 10 years old was left alone until we arrived for pickup. This went on for almost two years. The second year she contacted us and offered to bring over a cheesecake at Christmas time to thank my brother. I said that was very kind but she didn't have to. I'm sure my brother would like it. I can't eat dairy but very kind. She said non-dairy. I said again not necessary but you know a kind thing. She never brought over anything not even a card. My brother got no contact from her directly to be thanked at all. So one day I get a text from the entitled neighbor that she wasn't happy with her son riding in our work truck to and from the school bus that there were tools that had to be moved over so we could sit. I was flabbergasted. We all live on a steep hill so having a big truck with four wheel drive is the safest vehicle that we owned. Snow, ice, rain, 
upgrade, you name it. The drive took less than 10 minutes. So what if we had to push tools out of the way so he could see it? I was fuming over her presumption when I had a conversation with my brother about her paying you $40 a month. And he told me that she only paid him twice or maybe three times. Been a few years, can't even remember exactly. The whole time and never paid him $40 at all. It was the $20 payments. I was furious that he hadn't mentioned it before and that she'd been taking advantage of the whole family for almost two years. Our family had bent over backwards for this child. Even if my own child wasn't going to school, we'd still get up and go get the neighbor's child. So I texted the entitled neighbor. So I just talked to my brother and he told me that you've only paid him two or three times in the last two years. Can you please explain? I'm confused. The agreement was 20 a month and then you offered 40. What's going on? Entitled neighbor. I can't remember her exact words, but no apology. No offer of payment. And I offered to bring you a cheesecake at Christmas, but you said that you didn't want one. I didn't say that. I said she didn't have to. Me, humble country person. I fully expected her to bring one. I then told her we were under no circumstances going to continue this way. I said that payment had to be made. We had to be given notice if child was not going to school. That he had to meet us at the top of his driveway instead of battling down their drive. That if parents were home, they took him and we were still going to be taking our truck most of the time. I didn't want to deal with that family anymore. So I just said every demand that I could think of. Knowing that her personality would blow up. Entitled neighbor. He'll get picked up at our door if I say he's going to be picked up at our door. I know there was no way that they were going to back pay the fees as they were constantly complaining about money. So I said, well, this isn't working for us. So you're going to have to make other arrangements as we'll no longer be driving your son. So consider the last 15 months, excluding summer and Christmas breaks, etc. A gift from our family to yours and we'll just leave it there. Entitled neighbor, how are we supposed to get our son to the bus? We need someone to drop him off and pick him up at the end of the day. We'll be at work. Why are you being such a hard ass? I ignored her and I blocked her. I didn't speak to her family for years. I was furious at her outrageous statement. My friend said it best. What pisses me off the most is people who get something for free, then feel entitled to it for free. And then they complain that what they're getting for free isn't good enough for them anymore. The family changed their son's school back to the private school that he had before. That was closer to their work. Edit. I remember more now. Her response to me asking about the payment was, well, he never asked me for it. No, no, that's too infuriating. This is a real person. These are real people that are acting like this. You're telling me this isn't creative writing? I bloody hope it is. Completely taking advantage of you guys. And yes, so unbelievably entitled. Like it's mind blowing how entitled they are. And yet after all of this time, they still didn't thank you. Like yeah, thank you for doing something that you definitely didn't have to do for years. Yeah, we need to read something wholesome. That was way too frustrating. Definitely wholesome memes time. So I sold my daughter's slide yesterday on Facebook Marketplace. I asked the buyer, how old are your kids? She giggled and said, no, it's for my pugs. They love to go up and down a slide. We're all mothers in our own way. Made my day. Oh, they're so cute and so happy. That's so bloody adorable. It feels so good to read this. Beautiful little puppy dogs. They love their slide. Puppy furious after ocean water destroys his sandcastle. Yeah, come on. Mother nature, how could you do this? Poor puppy misses his sandcastle. Wow, that was a brand new sentence. When you're having a bad day, but the cat believes in you. Oh, fluffy little paws. Why can't my hands be adorable? But yeah, that's right. Cats give you so much unconditional love. It's amazing. Speaking of, they left you like you were trash and I collected you as my treasure. Oh, that's so nice. Good on you for looking after them. You've got a best friend forever now. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Sun Eater Zero. Absolutely love your video. You've even inspired me to start watching The Simpsons again. Oh, thank you. And that's such awesome news. Hell yes, I'm making a difference in the world. More people are watching The Simpsons. That's amazing. And I'm so happy to hear this. And yeah, thank you for watching the episodes. And thank you for the support. It means so much to me. These are so fun to make. I can't even stress enough how fun this job is. Like it is a job in the sense that it's what I do. But it's still pretty hard to call it a job. It's so fun. And I'm so grateful that you guys enjoy the episodes. I'm sure if I had more time in the day, I'd do like hour-long daily episodes. But unfortunately, there's only 24 hours in a day. But yeah, thank you for the support, guys. Got another adventure planned for tomorrow and I hope to see you then. So as always, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!